Welcome back to the Union Project. In this episode, I'll review how cork roadbed installation became a sudden crash course in Arduino controller programming and infrared block detection. Let's get started. In the last video, I shared my cookie cutter benchwork design and installation. I talked about using builder grade materials to keep costs down, and my approach for mapping track placement and assembling the upper and lower decks of the benchwork. With this benchwork complete, I was eager to start laying track and running trains. However, I first needed to install roadbed. In the past, I have used two basic roadbed types, foam roadbed and cork roadbed. Foam roadbed is easy to work with, effective, and affordable. It also does an excellent job of noise dampening. The only drawback I find is that it's very flimsy. It hasn't much structure, so it conforms to any surface and amplifies its imperfections. My sub roadbed was builder grade plywood, with gaps and flaws that needed to be corrected, and I decided that the stability and rigidity of the cork roadbed would be a better way to overcome these imperfections. Installation was straightforward. Each cork section was split and flipped to create beveled edges. I applied a generous coat of carpenter's glue along the center lines and clamped everything in place using push pins. I installed the roadbed over the course of two weeks, stopping only when I ran out of pins. It was satisfying to see the track plan come to life. I could finally see how the staging yard and the Bathurst fly under looked and I was really pleased. I started to install some tracks when I remembered I needed to split the roadbed where the east and west modules joined. This isn't a modular layout, but I am building it like one if I ever need to disassemble it. It was at this moment I realized I hadn't considered the staging yard's visibility. When designing the layout, I made a point of ensuring the staging yard wasn't beneath any of the top deck tracks. They were intentionally beneath the city. The city area is removable, so derailments are accessible. I had solved the access problem, but I had never considered the fact that I would have zero visibility as to the location of the equipment in the staging yard. I needed some form of block detection. Of the options available, I decided to try infrared detectors and Arduino controllers to indicate the locations of trains. I had already decided to use Arduinos to control my switch machines, so it made sense to use the same devices for block detection. There are many fantastic Arduino tutorials online, so I'm not going to go in depth of how I built my detection system, but I will take a brief look at the components and my approach. I used an Arduino controller, IR detectors, LEDs, and resistors for my block detection circuits. Hey everyone, real fast video. I just started laying track in the staging yard level of the layout. And as I'm getting towards the west side of the layout, I need to be able to know when to cut the power or stop um, the hidden passenger trains down here. So I need to do some sort of occupancy detection. So I have decided to try Arduino. This is brand new to me. I haven't used Arduinos before and I'm having a ton of fun. And so the bottom line is I'm using two IR detectors to create um, two indicator points along the line. As a train enters into the staging and it crosses the first IR detector, It'll give me a flashing red light to know that there is a train now moving through that staging track. And when it gets to its stop point, somewhere around here where I need to basically park it, it will have crossed both IR detectors, which will now give me a solid red. So, train enters into the hidden staging, automatically gives me a flashing red light as it proceeds, and when it hits its stop point, solid red, and I know that's where to stop the train. Anyway, good stuff. The software programming is straightforward. I defined a series of variables that would capture the state of the IR detectors, as well as the stages of the detection sequence. Running within the software loop, the first block of code records the state of each of the detectors, and records that information to the corresponding array value. The second block of code takes that information and activates the indicators. LEDs illuminate based on the state of the detector, and the progression through the indication sequence. I wanted an easy way to mount the detectors beneath the layout, so I designed and 3D printed small collars that allowed the sensor to fit snugly within a plastic sheath inserted into a 5 8 inch hole beneath the track. I installed 10 IR detectors over 4 staging tracks, which required 2 Arduino controllers. 
I temporarily attached the indicator LEDs to the frame, and after some troubleshooting, everything worked as expected. When the train enters the block and crosses the first detection point, it shows a flashing light indicating it's now passing through that siding. Once that same train crosses the second detection point, the LED switches from flashing to solid, indicating that the train has reached its stopping point, and it's clear of the points on both ends of the staging track. Once the train leaves the siding and the second IR detector returns to an open state, the LED indicator turns off, signaling that now the siding is clear and can be occupied again by another train. This was an unexpected project, but I'm grateful I remembered it before I needed to lay more track. Now that I have a better understanding of how Arduinos work, I'm eager to integrate them into the layout. Next time we'll review basic track installation, my experience using fast track jigs, and how I'm using Arduinos and servos for point control. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.